Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode of Shop Talk, we're going to be taking a look at this new multimeter I picked up off of uh, eBay. So it came in this rather nondescript cardboard box, which I was a little bit surprised because some of the other ones I had seen on eBay had a nice four-color box, and it's not like I need a four-color box to throw away, but it just was sort of interesting. came kind of loosely shrink-wrapped. Um, however, one of the buying criterias that I was looking for was the ability to connect it to a PC, and you can see I have it connected to a PC right now. Uh, and one of the things I like about this is, is uh, I bought this to replace a Craftsman unit I had for about 20 years that had an RS-232 port that did the same thing. Now this is ha actually has an opto coupler between these two, so there's no wired or copper connections, which is really nice. So there's galvanic separation between the meter and the computer. So like that. Um, the meter itself has uh, various voltage settings, various current settings. It also has temperature settings, which I have the temperature probe uh, hooked up uh, in it right now. Uh, also has a frequency counter, which is, I think, really cool. Um, also does capacitance and diode testing. So, you know, for around 50 bucks, I think it was a little bit less than 50 bucks, it does quite a few things. So I'm, I'm very happy about that and connects to the computer. It's got various min-max. Also, another thing that I really like is it has a backlit screen, so uh, makes it easy for my older eyes to read. My Craftsman didn't have that. So again, very happy. It takes a 9-volt battery. And it wasn't included. Uh, it is a fused unit up here, as you can see. It has a little kickstand, which is kind of a pain to get open. However, it does work. I also am not very happy with the angle it sits at, but um, so be it. Uh, however, um, what I did want to show is the connection to the computer. So I have it connected to the computer right now. Uh, the computer falls asleep. So one of the things that I, I do like about this is uh, you can see uh, I, I've been recording the temperature, you know, prior to this. And, and this is one of the things that I like is being able to... Uh, do data logging for the meter and that's what I really use the craftsman for is I could set it up I could measure voltages voltage shifts over a period of time current shifts over a period of time uh, without just having to stand there and manually watch the meter so this is this is why to me it was pretty critical to do this now this has uh, a digital as well as analog display it's got a graphical display it's got a uh, tabular display and you can save this data out which is kind of cool um, because I may use this to, uh, for some stuff on the laser and that to uh, measure laser performance and things like that but we'll cover that in a separate video so you can start and stop the controls it's got minimum min max range and so it, it's pretty basic um, However, I think more than functional. And then, you know, again, if I start this, and yes, I have, it asks that you have your device set up. And I do, I have it in PC link mode over here. This button sets PC link. And so now it's capturing data. So if I, you know, hold the, uh, you can see it spike up in temperature, I hope, uh, on the camera. Um, However, one of the one of the challenges that I do see with this, when I purchased it, I specifically made sure it worked with Windows XP because most of my uh, machines in the shop, I've got about six or eight of them, and the Windows ones are mostly Windows XP. And I wanted to make sure this meter would work with XP, and it does. However, when I was messing around with it uh, outside of the shop on a Windows 10, uh, machine it it wouldn't work the the USB drivers uh, wouldn't load it said uh, gave a number 10 error and again I'll put an overlay uh, because if you read the documentation uh, it basically says that the chipset is is uh, is EOL for Windows 10 now I don't know if any of you other guys out there have one of these and you've got it to work with Windows 10 let me know they point you to another site with a driver. Doesn't seem to work for me. Again, I've tried it on three Windows 10 machines. Have not worked. Now, the interesting thing is, on those machines, I've had Windows 7 on them before and did the upgrade to 10. So I'm really not sure why uh, it's not working. So if, if you would, hit me up below. Uh, and I'm kind of sharing that because if you're thinking about it and you have a Windows 10 PC, I don't want you to be surprised if you get this and it doesn't work with Windows 10. 
So that being said, what are some of the other things you get with it? Um, came with a very nice set of probes, actually. I was, I'm was i very pleased with these probes. They got probe covers on them, uh, protectors. Uh, very feels very nice, you know. Again, not Tektronics or Fluke quality, but hey, not bad for the Chinese. Uh, also comes with a small set of alligator clips uh, and banana jacks. Now, one of the things I noticed, the various banana jacks are all different. These took quite a bit of force to actually properly seat in, in the meter. These go in pretty easy as these do, so just maybe something to sort of beware. Um, comes with uh, a disc. Um, actually, I had to put this in my server and load it so I could load it on all my other machines. Uh, so that's all worked pretty good. So outside of the Windows 10 issue, this has actually been a, a pretty good meter so far. I've been very happy with it and for what I paid. Now, when I went looking, most of the meters uh, that, that did this were up around 100 and a half, 200. I didn't want to spend that kind of money being a hobbyist. Uh, again, if I was a professional, I'd definitely be owning Fluke or something like that. I've had Fluke in the past. It's a great, great equipment. Uh, however, just for messing around, uh, I think this is good, and it was sub-50 bucks. And it does work with Windows XP. And I've got it to work all the way up through Windows 7. It just seems, as in the documentation, 8 and 10 are issues. So I wanted to share that as part of this uh, sort of shop talk episode. So, hey, if you have... Um, digital recording multimeter like this, let me know below how you'd use it. I, I, I'm interested to hear how other folks may be using this. Maybe it's a, maybe be something I would be interested in using it for. Also, if you've gotten into work with Windows 10, let me know how you've done that so I can share it with the community as a whole, uh, how you've gotten it to work. And if you've got any questions uh, about this particular meter, hey, again, hit me up. I'd be happy to answer them if you've got any specific questions or see another video in use in a particular way. Um, you know, hey, we'd be happy to try it. Because one of the things uh, I am going to probably use this for is, again, uh, to measure and calibrate um, uh, you know, maybe my hot end or my beds on the 3D printer. Uh, and again, I'd be able to capture it here and compare it to the output, say, from Repetier or something like that to see how accurate the thermistor is on the actual machine versus, you know, an independent thermistor and kind of see how it works. Also going to try this with the uh, laser. I'm thinking about some experiments doing a thermistor with a laser target for making my own sort of homebrew um, energy meter. So kind of watch in a future video for that. So again, hey, thumbs up. Hit me up below if you got any questions, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.